Hello and welcome to the first of my Core 2 OCR revision videos. Today I'm going to be talking about trig identities because I think they are one of the hardest things that will come up on the Core 2 exam. So every time I do a trig identity question there are four steps I follow and I do it the same for all questions. So today I'm going to try and show you that process that I do and hopefully it will make some sense. So here is an example of a question. We have show that some horrible trig equation fin is the same as or is equal to some other horrible trig identity horrible fin. Now, the first thing I'll do is I'll write out what it's given us to start with. So we've got minus 3 sine. I will just miss out the x part because I'm lazy. Is equal to 8 over tan. And here I come across my first step and that is to make it simple. By that I mean get rid of any complicated bits of maths that will make it more awkward like brackets or fractions. We don't have any brackets here. If we did I would just times them out. We do have a fraction so I'm going to times through by tan to get rid of that fraction. So that will get us negative 3 sine tan is equal to 8. Now it is nice and simple, there are no horrible bits of maths that will make things awkward to think about. We get to the second step, and that is to look at what we want and what is at the end, the end product we're going through. What do we have here? We've got cos squared, and we've got cos, and we've got nothing. So the only bit of trig we've got in there is cos, and that is what we're going to try and get to. So, the third step is to use your identities. So you should know your identities. If you don't, you literally just need to sit down and remember them. There's no easy way to do that. The first one is that tan is equal to sine over cos. And the second one is that sine squared, my horrible right in there, plus cos squared is equal to one. So, the first thing I always do is I look for the tan. Do we have any tan here? Yes, but don't want any in the end product. So I'm going to change that tan into sine over cos, because then we've only got two things to worry about instead of three. So, I'm going to make this negative three sine sine over cos. Sine times sine is sine squared. Put in the over cos is equal to 8. So now we've changed something, we've used an identity, I'm going to go back to the first step, I'm going to make it simple again, we've got a fraction, let's get rid of that because they just make things awkward. So we're going to times through by cos, get minus 3 sine squared is equal to 8 cos. So now it's simple, if we look at the end, we only want cos, but we now have sine and cos. So we're going to use our second identity, sine squared plus cos squared is equal to 1, because this is the identity that you use to swap between sine and cos. We're going to, we've got sine squared that we don't want, so we're going to rearrange this to get sine squared equals, it gives us 1 minus cos squared. We're going to put this in, in place of this sine squared. So when we do that, we get negative 3, 1 minus cos squared is equal to 8 cos. We've changed something, so we go back to the start. We make it simple again. We've got brackets this time. Don't like them, they're complicated, so we're going to times them out. So we get negative 3 plus cos squared is equal to 8 cos. So now the second step is look at the end. We've got only cos here. But we've only got cos where, we are, where we're at, so there's nothing we need to change anymore. So we don't have to use any more identities, we've pretty much got what we need. So the last step is just to tidy up. I'm just going to make it look like it does in the question. With rearranging it, shouldn't be too much of a problem. Oh, I've just noticed I made a mistake there. When I times that out, it was 3 cos squared. I didn't actually write that down. Minus 3 times minus cos squared plus 3 cos squared. 
had a panic there, I thought I had the wrong question. Anyway, so we now just need to tidy this up and make it look like this final answer. So, this is 3 cos squared minus 8 cos minus 3. So we've got the 3 cos squared on this side already. We'll write that first. If we bring this over, because here everything's on the same side, it becomes minus 8 cos. We'll write that next. And then finally we'll put the minus 3 on the end, equal to 0, and we have made this the same thing that we were asked to in the question. So we're done. That's it. So that was my worked example. I'm now going to tell you what you need to know to remember for the exam. You want to remember these four steps because it makes it a lot easier. If you just remember, make it as simple as you can. Look at what you need, what you're aiming to get and what you have got. Use one of the identities to get a bit closer. If you've used one, go back to the start and make it simple again. Take another look, see if you can use another to get even closer. When you get there and what you've got in your little bit is the same as what you're trying to get to, then you just tidy it up and make it look the same to prove that you have done it. You will obviously need to remember the two trig identities. Tan is equal to sine over cos, and sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. If you can't remember them, there's no easy way about it. You literally just have to sit down and keep reading them over or something until you do remember them. Um, or I guess write them on your hand or something and get kicked out of the exam, possibly. No, it's easy to remember them. You should be fine. The way I think of them, this one is to go from tan to no tan and back again. So basically, if you've got tan and you don't want any, use this. Or if you don't have tan and you do want some, use this. They're the only two scenarios that you will use this identity. And that's if you want tan or if you want to get rid of tan. Now this second identity this is the one that swaps between sine and cos and back the way. So if you've got cos and you need sine you can use this. If you've got sine and you want cos you can use this. If you've got a bit of both and you want to make it just one or if you've got just one you want to make it a bit of both you use this. This is the one you'll use to get between your sine and your cos and your mix of them and it's the one you'll probably use the most often the only time you bring in this other one is if you want to get rid of tan or make some tan and quite often what they'll get you to do is make your tan into this and then swap around between them like we had in this example we just did but as long as you remember the four steps on how to approach this sort of question and just repeat through it until you get what you need and as long as you remember which identity to use when, the tan one only if you're trying to get rid of or get some tan, the other one for swapping between sine and cos, then you should be absolutely fine and you should have no problems doing the, this um, type of question. So I hope this has been remotely useful for at least one person, so I can call it a success. Um, let me know if there's anything else you want me to attempt to explain in the best I can. Um, yeah, that's about it. See you next time. One final point before I go, guys. If it gets to the point, say that you got up to here and you were stuck and for some reason you couldn't expand it and you couldn't figure out what you can do and you're, it's coming up five minutes to the end of the exam and you've got no idea what to do, just underneath wherever you got up to, write, therefore whatever you started with, which in our case was this, is equal to whatever you're trying to get, so the free cos squared blah 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 blah. Because it's a long shot, but you never know, you might actually be a tiny bit of tidying up away from the right answer and it's just not jumped out at you. So if you just write, so therefore that proves it, you might be lucky and the examiner might be, oh yeah, he knows what he means, I'll give him all the marks. It's a long shot, but you're not going to lose any marks for it, so why not try it? If you get stuck on a question, do as much as you can and just stick that extra line on the end and 
you might get lucky and get some extra marks. <laughs> that was the only other tip I could think of. So again, let me know if you want to see anything else. Thanks for watching, blah blah blah. Bye.